But on now to Robocop, a piece of comic book science fiction that hovers on the edge of being admirable but finally self-destructs because of its own excesses. The setting is Detroit sometime in the near future. Society is breaking down. Was there ever a time in the movies when society wasn't breaking down? However, Detroit is run by three main organisations, a bunch of evil bad guys, the cops and a multinational conglomerate that has a contract to run the city police force. Fellow executives, it gives me great pleasure to introduce you to the future of law enforcement. Ed 209. <laughs> We'll need an arrest subject. Mr. Kenny. Yes, sir. Would you come up and give us a hand, please? Yes, sir. Mr. Kenny is going to help us simulate a typical arrest and disarming procedure. Mr. Kenny, use your gun in a threatening manner. Point it at Ed 209. Yes, sir. Please put down your weapon. You have 20 seconds to comply. I think you'd better do what he says, Mr. Kenny. You now have 15 seconds to comply. You are in direct violation of Code 11379. You now have 5 seconds to comply. it's only a glitch. Well, that's amusing stuff and against this background Peter Weller plays a cop, almost as tough a cop as his partner Nancy Allen who eats a couple of lightly boiled bad guys for breakfast every morning. One day Mr Weller falls foul of the flakiest gang of nutters in town, a mob led by Kirkwood Smith and just for fun they shoot off both his arms and one leg and by way of an encore put a bullet through his forehead. This obviously leaves him with a nasty headache and no doubt a general feeling of malaise but astonishingly he's still alive and so Miguel Ferrer, whiz kid scientist with the multinational conglomerate takes whatever is left of him and turns him into a cyborg, half man, half machine, otherwise known as Robocop. And that's when the mayhem really starts and when a half-baked subplot about a behind-the-scenes struggle for power at the conglomerate involving Ronnie Cox and Dan Hurley is introduced. Now I did say that this was almost admirable, though you probably might not think so from that rundown. But the effects are first rate and there are some very funny gags, mostly involving a couple of TV newscasters who keep turning up wearing big toothy grins to announce the most appalling disasters, such as a mishap in the Star Wars programme that has totally wiped out Santa Barbara. All this is fine, and so is the direction by the Dutchman Paul Verhoeven, whose first American film this is. But there's a sickness at the heart of the picture, and inevitably it involves the violence, which goes beyond cruelty and even viciousness, and plunges into sadism. Robocop! Who is he? What is he? Where does he come from? He is OCP's newest soldier in their revolutionary crime management program. OCP spokesmen claim that the fearless machine has crooks on the run in old Detroit. Today, kids at Lee Iacocca Elementary School got to meet in person what their parents only read about in comic books. Robo, excuse me, Robo, any special message for all the kids watching at home? Ow. Stay out of trouble. More fighting in the Mexican crisis today when American troops participated in a joint raid with Mexican nationals against rebel rocket positions in Acapulco. Now this. Red alert. Red alert. Red alert. You crossed my line of death. You haven't dismantled your MX stockpile. Pakistan is threatening my border. That's it, Buster. No more military aid. Nuke them. Get them before they get you. Another quality home game from Butler Brothers. Now, what we've shown, take my word for it, is pretty mild stuff. But most of the jokes are about different ways to kill and maim people. If you think that's funny, then I'm sure you'll like Robocop. If you don't, you may agree with me that for all its high promise and for all the imagination and skill and wit that went into it, it's ultimately a rather distasteful picture which can't possibly do much good, except for the bank balances of those who made it.